Well, hello there, Mark Resnopkins, founding editor at SiliconANGLE, and uh, we are here once again at Google I.O. 2013, and I'm here with uh, Director of Product Marketing for Google Plus, uh, Seth Sternberg, right? Yeah, Product Management. Product yeah. Management. Ah, <laughs> I got really close on that. really close. Well, uh, thank you for taking some time to, to talk to us today. We uh, wanted to go a little bit uh, deeper into some of the Google Plus things that were talked about today, and you're the man to talk to. So uh, give us the, the high-level overview of, of kind of what's new and uh, what, what's, what's some of the things we can do with a single sign-on. Sure. So, you know, the Google Plus platform is very new, right? You know, two months ago, we launched Google Plus Sign-In, which let a developer connect their users yeah. inside their mobile apps or inside their websites with their Google experience. And so one part's just really simple, secure sign-in, right, with the same security that Google has for its own users. Another part is if a user has an Android app, then if a user has an Android app, mm -hmm. uh, or sorry, an Android phone, yeah. and they're connecting on the web, it's really easy for them to see a, a window just pops up and says, hey, you just connected to you know, guardian.co.uk. Do you want the Android app too? If the user says yes, it'll install on their phone without them ever touching their phone. So it's an unbelievably seamless experience to get an Android application from the web, right? You never even touch your right. mobile device. To things like sharing, right? We have two forms of sharing. One we call interactive posts. So if I wanted a friend to read an article, they'd get a share across all of Google. So it would go into search, it would go into maps, it would go into YouTube, the Google Plus stream. If I, if I type your name in, you'll get it across all of Google. And there's an action button right there that says read. And it'll take me right to the appropriate page, either in your mobile app or on your website. And then you can also just write mo what we call app activities. So tell us what users are doing inside your apps. The users give you permission to do that up front. When we get those activities, we'll put them on people's profiles, but we'll also put them in contextually relevant places inside Google. So for example, you know, a couple weeks ago we launched app activities in Google Search. So for app activities coming from movie apps and from music apps, we put those into Google Search to make it you know, really easy for users to see what other people are doing inside a given app. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things. We have so much more too, but those are some of the features we're really excited about. Well, I, so I'm, I'm interested in to, to kind of the philosophy uh, behind the implementation. Uh, one of the things that was interesting for me to watch uh, was, uh, I was I was an early user on FriendFeed, of course, Paul Buchheit, former Googler, went over to Facebook yep. and kind of pioneered the, the frictionless sharing thing, which is, I think, related to what you're working on. So there's there's a delicate balance, though, as like folks that have watched this have kind of understood that, you know, between too chatty and not chatty enough, and the whole friction. Where where did, so where is the the kind of the Google philosophy? I mean, because I guess if you look at uh, past Google products, maybe Buzz is one end of that spectrum, and Google Plus is the other end, where it's kind of more of a curated, tighter, cleaner experience. So yep. uh, what is kind of the end game? with uh, Google sign-in and the, the frictionless sharing kind of stuff that you're working on here? Yeah, it's a great question. So when we were developing Google Plus sign-in, we heard from users two things that sounded like they conflicted. Yes. It was, I don't want you to spam my friends, but if I choose to share with my friends, I want to absolutely know my friends are getting that share. So what we did is we created app activities so that they go to the contextually right place inside Google, right? They don't just print a stream. So you, there's no way to just kind of like, have users take action in an app without a user kind of explicitly saying, I want to share this, and have it go straight to feed. Because, you know, straight to feed is time-based, and I don't really care if you read an article about Costa Rica right now, because we're standing here at I.O. in San Francisco. Now, if I do a search later for, you know, Costa Rica, then I'd actually care what you've commented on about Costa Rica or what you've read about Costa Rica. So taking that social activity and putting it into the right points of intent for a user where they'd really care. Now that's the part where an app can just tell us what a user's doing kind of on a more just, you know, use by use basis. There's this other kind of sharing, which is users saying, hey, I want to tell my friend. I explicitly want to share this thing with my friend. If a user types in their friend's name, then that will go right to the friend. It'll produce a notification. It'll produce an email. The friend will get that everywhere, right? So it's really two sides. One is for four things that are all about letting a user just take actions in an app and have those come into Google, mm -hmm. that's really, it only goes to where the user might, their friends might want to see it, right, in context. For ones that a user says, I want to share this with friends, that will be delivered with certainty. So talk about some of the kind of cool things that were, uh, there's a blimp control system behind me. Sure. So so uh, what, so talk a little, I guess maybe give us a practical example using the blimp uh, or, or, or anything else that you guys are kind of working on right now that's kind of cool about this that you want to talk about and show off. 
Sure, so you know, right over there, yes. the camera pans over there, yeah. we've got Google Plus Photos with Auto Enhance. So that's an example of a really cool feature sure. that you know Google Plus launched for I.O. Mm -hmm. um, that feature literally takes the photos that you're uploading to Google Plus and automatically makes them beautiful for you, right? It does all the same things that a professional would do with photos and does it automatically for the user. So I think that's a really special thing that we launched. Or content recommendations. So we launched this awesome feature mm -hmm. uh, just a few days ago where an app developer can put content recommendations into their mobile app. Yeah. So as a user is looking through different articles in their app, they get a suggestion of you know, what's the next article you might want to read. Mm -hmm. So that's really special too, because we heard from developers, look, there's not like I don't have enough use, enough engagement in my mobile web. Right On a mobile website, too many users are just coming and they're bouncing right off the site. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we made it possible for those users to find the next interesting piece of content using the power of both Google Plus and Google Search together. I have a lot of more. I have a lot more questions to ask you, but uh, we're we're actually holding up traffic here. So I, I want to. So I'll close out with one question here. Uh, from a developer perspective, uh, kind of, because uh, I've I've been in those shoes as well. I'll be much 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 uh, many times much time has passed since that happened. Uh, but I under, I'm kind of familiar with the idea of 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 needing or wanting that virality that. Uh, I guess most people associate with Facebook, but if, of course there's the cautionary tales in the social networking world like MySpace sure. with, uh, you know, giving the developer too much freedom to, to, to spam. So from a developer perspective, how do you justify, I guess, or how do you, how do you sell it to the developer? The idea that, yeah, we're giving you virality, perhaps not as much virality as you want, but it's you know, more healthy for the ecosystem overall. Sure, so um, I think a couple things. One is, there are a number of channels that we've now opened up for a developer to let a given user reach into Google across all of Google properties, right? Into search, into the Google Plus stream, into Maps, and grab, you know, tell their friend, hey, I want you to join me. And when they say that, it's a very specific action, right? I want you to view this menu. I want you to watch this video. And there's a button right there on that share that is that is an action button, you know, watch, listen. So, so give me give me a kind of an example or a use case of what something I might see that pops up in Maps, for instance. Sure, so a friend of yours might say, hey, um, I want you to check out this menu on OpenTable. When they put your name in to that box, when you're on Maps, you will get a notification right there in the top that says Seth just shared something with you. When you click that notifier, you'll see the notification, you'll tap on it, you'll get the full rendered view, right, because the notifications menu comes down. And there is a button right there that says like view menu. If you hit that button, you will go right to open table, right? You'll go right to their website or right to their uh, mobile app, depending on- Contextually on. specific spot of uh, the, the share. Yes, that's right. Right into the right part of the app. And I just got you in maps, right? It doesn't matter what property you're on. And when you go there, you're going to specifically take an action like view a menu or watch a video or read an article, right? Because these are buttons that are literally like, hey, you might want to do this specific action. That's very powerful, right? Because we're not just sending you a lot of traffic. We're sending you traffic that wants to do something, right? right? It's traffic that's very likely to engage in your property. So that, you know, traffic for the sake of traffic, it's actually not that helpful, right? Traffic that wants to engage in your property, right? High intent traffic, which is what Google has always been so great at. That is what we are also bringing to developers with the Google Plus platform. This is a way to truly connect your users with all of their Google experience, right? In a way that's spam protected and private and secure for the user, but that will bring you back traffic and drive pages for you on a very high intent basis. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. It's fantastic stuff. It's very, it's interesting and it, it really kind of shows me uh, some some interesting things to be, be able to do with with a single sign-on process. I think only Google may be capable of at this point. I mean, your your ecosystem is unmatched in a lot of ways. So it's, uh, I'm I'm going to be uh, watching this intently to see how it develops. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming over. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, signing off, Mark Rosen Hopkins at Google I/O at uh, 2013, and uh, stay tuned. We'll be bringing you more updates from the show.